Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for joining me here today on the Cabral Concept. Today is our Total Wellness Tuesday episode, and we're going to be going over the seven benefits of melatonin. Why this is so important is because sleep is one of the most vital things that you can do as part of your overall health or healthy metabolism and anti-aging-based plan. So one of the things that we always talk about in our natural health-based practice is helping people achieve their ideal body weight, nobody else's body weight, but theirs. And then if there's anything left in terms of overall wellness after they've achieved their uh, ideal weight, what we want to do is make sure that there's no autoimmune issues, there's no headaches, migraines, you know, skin rashes, gut issues, heavy metals, etc. Make sure that's good. And then once that's good, then we can work on the anti-aging and longevity-based process. Because the truth is that it's unlikely that someone lives a long, healthy life if there are wellness-based issues or they're well above their ideal weight. And again, these are all physiological, science-based, you know, proven reasons. And so what we want to do is just make it easier for people. And so one of those things that we look at in the de-stress protocol is sleep, right? That's the R, that's the rest-based protocols. So there's diet, exercise, stress reduction, toxin removal, rest, right? So we'll talk about those uh, part of that sleep program here today. Emotional balance, science-backed supplements, and then a success mindset. So what I want to share with you is what melatonin is. And I talk about this in the rain barrel effect and why this is important. And I'll be talking about this on a Thursday show as well. So definitely stay tuned for that. The, um, basically, it's the, the theory of aging and why it happens. But everything in the body has an inverse to it as well. So if you think about it this way, the reason why a lot of times we have energy during the day, it's just one, but one of them is that our adrenals produce something called norepinephrine and cortisol. So that's a great thing. And it produces the majority of that right around 6 to 8 a.m. in the morning. <clears throat> that kicks off a cascade of waking up and energy for the body. And at the same time, it lowers melatonin production because melatonin is a hormone that's produced inside the brain, uh, actually from a gland called the pineal gland or pineal gland, <clears throat> excuse me. And um, it gets signaled hopefully later at night, and we'll talk about when that is, as it's time to get ready for sleep. And that hormone helps us get to sleep and also stay asleep. So one of the reasons why this amazing process works so well is because in the morning, our eyes are exposed to blue light and different spectrums from sunlight. So it's very, very helpful um, to be able to get early morning light. Now, if you're not able to, I've talked about this on a previous show, and I'll, maybe I can link it up here today as well. Uh, today's show notes will be at stephencabral.com forward slash 2587. And it's called a light box. It's simple. It's easy. Uh, when I was living in... Um, Maine even for a winter as well. I used to have that light box on uh, my uh, sink in my bathroom where I was getting ready. And while I was shaving and getting ready in the morning, that light box would give me light to act like the sun because it was gray skies for a lot of the winter. So these are things that help with seasonal affective disorder, so mood-based issues, you know, anxiety, depression, uh, items like that in the winter, uh, but also with energy. And because uh, the adrenals and thyroid essentially act together in the morning. Now, as the sun is setting, it's equally as great to be able to get uh, see the setting sun at night because that helps to signal then a lowering of cortisol. It's already getting lower, hopefully naturally anyways. And then a gentle rise in melatonin. So about six in the morning, uh, cortisol will begin to rise. And then about six at night, it will really start to get lower. And by seven, eight, nine p.m., melatonin production will really begin. So that is how the symphony literally happens with energy hormones and sleep hormones inside the body. So what I want to share with you, though, is that people are not producing enough melatonin at night. Why are they not producing enough melatonin at night? Typically because of a racing mind, a mind that will not shut off, right? That's a big part of it higher levels of cortisol and stress. And the third one is they're exposed to too much blue light in their homes. So, or even, again, when I was living in Boston, right in the city, you'd have street lights on. I mean, the city's always lit up, right? So if you have the windows open, you're getting all that blue light as well. So what we need to do is we need to use that 3 2, one formula for sleep. I'll, I'll link that up. Um, if you have difficulty sleeping, I just went over that. <clears throat> Excuse me, let me see if I can find that episode number for you. 
Uh, it's episode 2526. So my team will link that up today. All links will be at stephencabal.com forward slash 2587. You want to use that to really improve your overall sleep. But today we're going to stick with melatonin. What's melatonin? Uh, again, we talked about that as a sleep hormone. And how does it help though if we want to go beyond sleep? So it helps get us to sleep and keep us asleep. Great. So we know that. But there are other reasons why we want to be able to boost melatonin levels. Okay, this is crucial. One of them, believe it or not, is for eye health. Melatonin is one of the most powerful antioxidants that we know about as well. Well beyond sleep hormone, it's a powerful antioxidant. And so if you're dealing with any type of vision health-based issues, you may want to look into supplemental melatonin. We'll talk about that a little bit more towards the end. What you want to do is max out your natural melatonin. Like that's the goal, but I'm going to talk about supplemental. I'm also going to talk about testing your melatonin levels if you'd like to. So all again, all these things are possible. So eye health is a huge one. Uh, we use a product, I think it's called Daily Vision and Eye Health, uh, that has lutein, zeaxanthin, astaxanthin, it does not contain melatonin because you can take that during the day, but you may have melatonin to that. Those are really, really powerful uh, antioxidants for eye health. Another one is uh, actually helping with the mitochondria. So a lot of people don't know this, but if you have a lot of oxidative stress in your body, you're actually going to deteriorate, break down, and um, not allow for what's called mitochondrial biogenesis or the rebuilding of mitochondria in your body. And again, why does that matter? Because those mitochondria produce the energy. They produce something called ATP. You've probably heard that before. It's called adenosine triphosphate. And that actually enables you for those short bursts of energy. If you have difficulty exercising with weights or doing things like that, it could be that there's a mitochondrial issue and you need to improve that overall. But it's a really important one because this, uh, the melatonin actually helps with those reactive oxygen species. So whether it's a big cheat meal, uh, drinking alcohol, too much weight training, believe it or not, right? Creating more reactive oxygen species, uh, even really hot sauna for a high level of time. These things are all beneficial for the body, right? Weight training, sauna, uh, but it can produce a lot of reactive oxygen species. We just need to make sure we have powerful antioxidants of our own, like melatonin, in order to be able to help with the, pair ba the repair based process. All right, so really, really important. The last part with the mitochondria I want to uh, add, and we'll probably talk about this in the future, uh, is something called reactive nitrogen species. Um, and again, these things can be uh, detrimental in terms of oxidative stress in the body. So we'll talk about that. Melatonin production helps with all of those. Another way that I have used it in my practice before uh, for certain individuals, and we just see this now, you know, the statistics keep changing, but it's somewhere around like one in every 66 children uh, now has autism or at least some type of autism spectrum-based spectrum, spectrum -based disorder. And we know from clinical studies that many children with autism or ASD do not produce enough melatonin. So they're not getting the proper repair at night. They're producing higher levels of stress hormones. And there's, it's typically connected with gut issues as well and even heavy metals. So one thing we look at is just making sure that children with ASD are able to get a good night's sleep. And that's really, really important because um, a good night's sleep is paramount to both the mind and body health and balance. So that's another way that we use it. And again, you may want to look into that again if you have a, a family member or you're working with a practitioner that helps specialize in autism. Whenever I do a, quite a number of trips to the West Coast, so I'm an East Coast kind of guy and I travel the West Coast quite a bit. And if it's an extended period of time, I will actually use, and I have a whole podcast on this, so I'll try to link that up, caffeine in the morning to reset my circadian rhythm and melatonin at night in order to be able to improve overall balance. Now, this is actually not very difficult going to California because for most people it's not much of a challenge, right, to stay up a little bit later. That that part is, you know, often oftentimes a little bit easier, especially if you're out having a later dinner, whatever it might be. But I use it when I come back to the East Coast. So let's say if it's just a short trip, I stay on East Coast time. But if I'm out there for a week, it's unlikely, and I have events, and I have dinners, and I have speaking, whatever it might be, it's unlikely I'm going to be able to stay on the East Coast time. So let's say that I'm going to bed at 10 p.m. out there. My typical normal bedtime, well, that's, you know, 1 p.m. or 1 a.m. on the East Coast. So now I get back after a week, well, my body is not ready to go to bed at 7 p.m., which would be 
10 p.m. West Coast time. So what I can do is I can actually use a little bigger dose of melatonin only for maybe two, three days maximum in order to be able to reset that circadian rhythm and then just have a cup, small cup of coffee in the morning uh, to be able to then help produce more of those cortisol levels at the time I would typically want them to rise, right? So really, really easy way to combat a jet lag, like really easy. Um, there are more advanced ways, but that's a super simple one in order to be reset that circadian rhythm. Uh, another one I wanted to share with you is, and this is, I mean, this is one that we've been using quite a bit. And I'll, I'll actually, I'll combine these two. Overall immune balance. So if your body is producing higher levels of cortisol in the short term or more norepinephrine, it can give you a little bit of an immune boost, but chronic stress and chronic cortisol actually can weaken your immune system. So melatonin will simply help you to produce less cortisol at night because if you're producing more melatonin at night, then you're dropping cortisol levels because remember, they work in, in an inverse ratio. So if you increase your melatonin production, cortisol goes down. If you increase your cortisol production, melatonin goes down, right? So if you see blue light, cortisol goes up, melatonin goes down. That's why it's not good at night. And if you see the blue light in the morning, great, cortisol goes up, melatonin goes down. So we really want to look at that. that that's absolutely crucial. So that's, the, that's a big part of the immune system. Again, if your immune system is dysfunctional, you're going to want to look at balancing your overall circadian rhythm. I'll do other podcasts in the future, but I talk about this quite in depth too in my book, The Rain Barrel Effect. Now, by the way, that's free. Literally, it's free on my website, so I don't want to feel like I'm promoting that too much. You, of course, can get it on Amazon if you'd like, but it, it is free on my website. You just literally pay for shipping. I pay to print the book now. That's what I've been doing. So the last part is this. Um, we, we're not going to talk specifically about any specific viral names, but clinical research and studies have now shown that melatonin can be a great add-on for a natural health or however, whatever intervention you'd like to take with viral, certain viral-based issues. Part of that can be the overall improvement in sleep right? Decreasing cortisol, getting yourself into more deep sleep, more REM sleep, all of that matters, right? Because deep sleep is improving the body, right? At a physiological body level. And REM sleep is helping to repair the overall mind. And that's important too, because if there's a lot of inflammation in the brain, well, you're more likely to have brain fog as well. So they're both important, right? Deep sleep and REM sleep. Deep sleep should be about 90 minutes, uh, and REM sleep about two hours. I have a lot of podcasts on those. And if you ever can't find a podcast at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast by searching, uh, do feel free to reach out. Just reach out inside of cabralsupportgroup.com. We'll find it for you. So just let us know. We'll be happy to help. All right, so the last part is this. Besides the improvement in deep sleep, REM sleep, repair of the body, uh, there, is, there is a potential even beyond its antioxidant ability in order to be able to downregulate uh, viruses. And so that newer research remains to be seen. We know that it helps as an antioxidant. We know that it helps with reactive oxygen species. We know that it helps lower cortisol. We know it help improves deep sleep and potentially REM sleep as well. All of those things are going to be great for the immune system, but it may have something extra that we're studying right now as to why uh, it seems to at least help with the overall process of viral-based replication. So really exciting. I mean, again, I, I love looking at the research. We've known that it's worked forever, right? Just through natural health, that's how the human body works. What I want to share with you, though, is if you choose to use melatonin, oh, great. Just understand that melatonin as a supplement is sometimes not the only reason why people can't sleep. That's why I wanted to give you all the other benefits of melatonin because you may not be taking melatonin, you may not decide to boost your own melatonin, that's totally up to you. But it's not just about sleep. Melatonin is not just about sleep. It's about actual repair overall in the body, the, both the body and the brain. And so uh, there's a few things we do because I'm not going to go through it. Uh, maybe I have a podcast as well on the, all the different reasons for sleep, which can be neurotransmitter-based, right? We talk about 5-HTP. It can be nervous system-based, magnesium, magnesium to calcium, and, and potassium to sodium. So all of those things matter, right? Like they all matter, absolutely. But our, our sleep protocol looks at all of these things. So what I want to do, I, we can't link up the sleep protocol, but you can find it at stephencabral.com forward slash shop. Um, again, choose to use Equalife or another company, totally up to you. But we show you all the different ingredients of what we use. So we have a sleep, it's called the sleep health protocol, okay? Sleep health protocols, uh, by far and away, the most comprehensive. It looks at all the different factors for people not being able to sleep. So it's going to look at the magnesium levels. It's going to look at the uh, adrenal glands if you're overproducing cortisol. So there's a product called Adrenal Soothe. There's full spectrum magnesium. There's then sleep help support with the neurotransmitters. Um, but 
if you're just looking at melatonin, I want to tell you how to just dose that. Melatonin is easiest to dose in a liquid form. So typically, on a daily basis, uh, people are, are using 0.5 micrograms. We're talking about small amount here, right? Small amount. To uh, up to five micrograms. And the reason why that this is important, and, and I think that this is um, you know worth stating, is that you don't need to replace, and sorry, it's, it's milligrams, you don't need to replace all of the melatonin your body would produce. Okay, so let's say you're taking, no, let's say you're taking two, two and a half milligrams uh, per day, small dose, right, of melatonin. Your body most likely on its own is producing five to 10x that per night. Right, like so, you're not you're not removing, you're not overdoing all of it. A lot of the people in our practice actually use the liquid melatonin, which is the non-drowsy formula, in order to just reduce the cortisol at night, turn off the racing mind, uh, and then help them fall asleep, and their body kind of takes it from there. So it's one way of looking at it. It's my preferred way, really. Like I'll use the adrenal soothe. We use it all the time. The full spectrum magnesium. That's great for the overall nervous system, the hormones, etc but a small dose. So I'm not a mega dose nutritional supplement person in general. Now, you might say, well, what about, you know, if someone has a virus and they're taking 10 milligrams of uh, melatonin or maybe even more? I understood, yes. For maybe a two to three week period of time, you are taking that much. And then you're gradually tapering down by like two and a half milligrams a day. And at night, meaning because you're not using it during the day, you're only using it at night. So I should give you that caveat as well. Melatonin is best used anywhere from 30 minutes before bed to right before bed if you want to two hours before bed. If you're someone that really takes a long time to wind down, use the three, two, one sleep formula. I share that in the podcast. But take melatonin a couple, an hour and a half, two hours before bed. You can do that without a doubt. And so what I do, and even myself, this is what I do, is I take two and a half milligrams typically a night. And I do that just about 20, 30 minutes before bed. And all that does, it, it makes a monumental difference in my overall deep sleep and allows me to fall asleep faster. It's called latency, how quickly you fall asleep. Without melatonin, it takes me a little bit. With it, it's within five to 10 minutes. It's like I'm a totally different human being. So that small dose of melatonin, I get all the antioxidant benefits with it, and I also knock down that stress hormone that my body uh, can produce a good amount and allows me just to simply wind down. So what I believe, I always believe in doing the, maximizing your own natural health. I try to exercise a little bit earlier in the day. I use a three, two, one formula. I'm using amber-based lights at night. I'm turning off the blue lights. I'm wearing blue light blockers, all those things. And then just giving a little bit of health, help, right, through taking some non-drowsy liquid melatonin. That's what I found to be really, really helpful. Wanted to share that with you. So again, anywhere from 30 minutes before bed to two hours before bed. And start small. Like start at 0.5 or one milligram, honestly. Because if you don't need more, you don't need more. I used to use five milligrams and then I wean down to four milligrams and it's very easy with a liquid dropper, right? Because every dropper is basically two and a half milligrams. And then you just wean down just a little bit more and then you can be at the lowest possible dose that you need. And some people might always want to use a little bit because they believe in the anti-aging longevity-based benefits of it. And some people might want to come off completely. But it's one more way to help better regulate that circadian rhythm and get all the benefits. And I wanted to share with people the benefits go well beyond just sleep. So hopefully this was helpful. Again, do feel free to let me know if you have any comments, any follow-up questions. Always happy to help. Take care. And uh, all the show notes today will be at stephencabral.com forward slash 2587 with plenty of continuing education there as well. All right, take care. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.